In 1993, the world-famous psychonaut Terence McKenna wrote a book called Food of the Gods. And in this book, he created a hypothesis that explained how psychedelic mushrooms were a catalyst in human evolution, which ultimately formed humanity and what we know as consciousness today. It explains how he went from some dumb ape that really only wanted sex and food to an incredibly curious being with complex language and the desire to understand itself and the world around it on a deep level. So the theory goes something like this. Around 200,000 years ago, there was a rapid doubling in the size of the human brain cavity. This increase in brain size occurred so quickly that scientists and archaeologists are baffled. There are not many other instances in tracing evolution where we have seen such rapid changes in such a short period of time. And the theory says this doubling of brain size is ultimately what evolved Homo erectus into modern day Homo sapiens. And with this brain cavity size increase came something that no other species on the planet has, language. And with this language came writing, drawing, stories, and religion. We went from a species that communicated basic emotions using primal sounds to a species communicating not only emotions, but complex ideas and concepts as well. We went from a species that solely wanted its biological needs met in things like sex and food, maybe a little nurture, to one that started thinking, what the fuck am I? How did I get here? We essentially became self-aware. We became conscious of ourselves. And we started pondering the possibility of something greater. And in this pondering of something greater came religion. And in Terence McKenna's Stone Ape Theory, he cites psilocybin mushrooms, or what many commonly know as shrooms or magic mushrooms, as the catalyst in creating human consciousness as we know it today. And that might sound crazy, but his reasoning is actually very sound. So the explanation behind stoned ape theory goes all the way back hundreds of thousands of years ago at the end of an ice age when our human ancestor, Homo erectus, was living in Africa. And in the ice age, Africa was lush forest. And because in forest areas, there is so much biodiversity, our human ancestors didn't have too much of a problem finding food, whether that be gathering berries or hunting down animals. But as the ice age retreated and the globe started to warm up, the forest retreated and grasslands became the main landscape in which our ancestors lived. And because of the landscape change from forest to savanna, food was no longer as abundant and we were forced to adapt. And the theory goes that, as a resort, we began to search under the dung of other mammals for beetles, bugs, and other grub. And that in this dung contained the great psilocybin mushroom, which abundantly grows out of animal droppings. You might ask, why would we start looking for food in poop? Wouldn't that kind of be sort of a last resort? Well, it's, it's kind of a primal thing. Virtually all other primates in existence today search for bugs and poop, so it's highly likely that our Homo erectus ancestors did as well. And if we didn't live in the modern world today, perhaps we would too. And the theory says that the groups who ate this mushroom actually had an evolutionary advantage over those who did not, due to the fact that this mushroom enhances vision and increases sex drive. With the enhanced vision, we would have been better able to hunt and find food and with the increased sex drive, we would have been producing more babies who were born from consumers of this mushroom. Another property of the psilocybin mushroom is that it stimulates the language portion of the brain. If you take a low to moderate dose of this, you might find your ability to articulate significantly enhanced. Somehow the words just may seem to flow perfectly out of your mouth, and you don't know why. And if you take a very high dose of the substance, it's possible that the language part of the brain become so overstimulated that language altogether may stop working for you or you might just be talking gibberish or something for periods of time. And the theory goes that 
our ancestors were for the most part only consuming small amounts of the mushroom. So if an entire tribe had psilocybin mushrooms introduced into their diet, the tribe's overall communication levels could have been much better. And from an evolutionary standpoint, the ability to effectively communicate is incredibly advantageous. We can warn others of danger, we can give advice, and we can just help each other survive. And over time, perhaps over tens of thousands of years, this level of communication shifted from basic primal sounds to very complex language, which is ultimately what gave birth to human culture as we know it today. The mushroom also sparks creativity as well, which could also be a potential explanation for new ideas, ways of living, and inventions that also helped us survive. And one might ask, won't the effects of the mushroom only last however long the substance is in our system? No, no it would not. Not necessarily, because psilocybin mushrooms cause neurogenesis. These mushrooms literally can cause new neural pathways in the brain to form, and these pathways can stick for life, and even can be transferred to offspring. And if this neurogenesis keeps occurring over thousands and thousands of years, then it could explain the doubling of the size of the human brain, including the development of the language portion of the brain, as well as some other sections of the brain. So with this in our diet for potentially hundreds of thousands of years, the theory states that the psilocybin mushroom is essentially what turned us from these ancient primitive humans, such as Homo erectus, into modern day humans. And with the emergence of Homo sapiens, came a vast expansion in what we call consciousness. And all the changes I previously listed played a role in that. As Terence McKenna put it, we ate our way to consciousness. We went from a species that was, for the most part, just concerned with meeting our biological needs and surviving. And so one day, the first human thought, Who really am I? How did I get here? What in the fuck is this world? And ever since then, we've been exploring ourselves and trying to learn about the world around us. And we've come a long way. We literally thought the world was flat not even that long ago. We were afraid to sail off the edge of the earth. This curiosity that sprouted with the evolution of human consciousness is incredible, and is something we don't see in any other species. And also with this curiosity came all of our stories of how we were created. Through higher powers and gods, whatever you believe, this desire to explain things is what created religion. And a part of the stoned ape theory can also include how we got our stories of religion. Psychedelic mushrooms are known to induce spiritual and mystic experiences. Many people report encountering entities or spirits on the substance. And many have the feeling that the realm of the mushroom is an entirely separate reality that feels strikingly familiar, like it was foolish to believe that we had come to consider our reality as the reality. It's also worth noting the fractal patterns we see in mushrooms is also a widespread illustration throughout religion. So one could make the argument that through tripping on magic mushrooms, religion as we know it was created. So yeah, this is the stoned ape theory. I personally, I think this is very compelling reasoning and explaining how humanity came to be. I think it's fascinating how no one can really explain why the human brain developed so rapidly. And I think McKenna did an excellent job in creating an explanation to why that happened. I don't think what Terence McKenna proposed is true word for word. I don't think mushrooms were the sole reason that the human brain size doubled so quickly. And I don't think it was the only reason we developed the ability to think and articulate in complex ways. From what I know about the world, it usually isn't just one or even two things that are the reasoning behind such big occurrences. I definitely think how humans became humans from an evolutionary standpoint is much more complex than a mushroom. However, I'm actually much more interested in how mushrooms created us culturally than how it created us genetically. I find it very hard to believe that our ancestors somehow one day just randomly created these stories about religion. Especially when you consume a decently high dose of this mushroom, you have what we know as a religious experience. I don't think we made up these stories out of nowhere, and then we consume this mushroom and the mushroom merely reinforces that. I genuinely think we got these stories from the mushroom. If you spend enough time in the psychedelic realm, you will likely come to realize that this really is the fountain from which creativity flows. And when early humans started using the mushroom, they opened the channel to creativity. And as a result, we've gotten massive cultural innovation. So while I think the psilocybin mushroom may have played a role in changing us genetically, 
I don't think there's a question that it has changed us culturally. The religion you believe in today, the worldviews you hold, the thoughts you have about the universe may not have been possible without the assistance that psychedelic mushrooms had on your ancestors. From a young age, I've always been a dreamer. I can't recall a day that's passed in which I did not ponder my existence. And I always thought religion was foolish in explaining our existence until I started dabbling into psychedelics. And don't get me wrong, I still think a lot of aspects of religion are foolish. But it's the underlying message in which nearly all of them convey that I find so fascinating and was all really impossible for me to grasp until I underwent some intense psychedelic experiences. If I had never taken a psychedelic, I would likely bash McKenna's theory as just plain stupid. But because the mushroom sparked my creativity in ways that I didn't know was possible and showed me deep underlying religious messages such as oneness, I find the stoned ape theory incredibly compelling. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Could the stoned ape theory be true, or is it just nonsense? I hope you found this video informative. Leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe, do what you have to do. And as always guys, have a great day and peace.